Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to be analyzing uh, data with a method called Principal Components Analysis. And Principal Components Analysis is a data reduction technique that creates components or factors, what people sometimes call factors, uh, that allow us to interpret a uh, larger, relatively large series of data in a smaller number of components that uh, can be meaningfully interpreted. And in today, uh, today's example that I'm going to demonstrate how to perform the analysis uh, in SPSS, I've got some real data that uh, are discount premium estimates for some listed investment companies on the Australian Stock Exchange. Uh, in other countries, these investments are known as close-ended funds. Um, and uh, in America and Canada, that's what they're known as. So I've got uh, a total of, let's look at the data in the variable view. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine uh, listed investment companies that trade at either a premium or a discount to their net asset value. And I've got the monthly uh, discount premiums represented by uh, the discounts are negative values and the uh, premiums are positive values. Um, so in this case here in, in uh, 2004, January 30, the uh, premium for ARG was nearly 11. Uh, whereas for CIN, it was negative 3.64. And I have these data running from uh, December 31st, 2003, all the way down to um, April 30th, uh, 2011. All right, so I want to reduce these data to determine whether there's one big component that can account for the uh, ver the correlated variance amongst the uh, listed investment companies. So if one listed investment company is trading at a premium, is another, ver is another listed investment company going to be trading at a premium? And if you can say that across all eight or nine listed investment companies I have, have here, it, we w uh, I will be able to reduce these data from eight or nine variables what is that again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine variables down to one. However, there might be other factors. Some uh, listed investment companies might trade at a discount premium and they might hang together um, while others might more closely hang together. So there might be four in one group and five in the other group. And that's what I'm performing this principal components analysis for is to determine that. Now the first, this isn't a full lecture on principal components analysis, that's just a brief introduction as to what it does. Now how to actually do this in SPSS, you have to do it in a sequential step because you have to know how many components to extra extract in the analysis. So in the first step, you perform the analysis to look at the scree plot. So in this dimension, you go into dimension reduction, go into factor, uh, and then throw in your variables that you want to uh, subject to a principal components analysis. Go into extraction. Now what I want for the first step is really just the scree plot. Because I want to look at the scree plot to help, help tell me how many uh, components I should extract. So I'll minimize this window. Just bear with me here. All right. Okay, so if we go to the scree plot just right away, everything else is not uh, important for us to interpret. We can see uh, that the um, break seems to be at about after the first two components. So the first two components definitely look like meaningful, legitimate components. And then there's a precipitous drop here down to the third component. And it looks like maybe the third component might be something worth extracting. Uh, but I, I've, my hunch is that it's not. It's probably just associated with one variable. In fact, I know after analyzing the data myself more thoroughly that this third component is not something you could interpret meaningfully. 
There is a more sophisticated approach to evaluating how many components you should extract in an analysis, and it's called, in the behavioral sciences, people call it a parallel analysis. But more generally, it should be known as a Monte Carlo simulation approach to estimating the statistically significant, if you will, uh, eigenvalues versus the non-statistically significant eigenvalues. And I'm going to prepare another video